This video was made possible by Woodchip Woodworking. Hello YouTube, welcome to the second video of an eight part series focusing on the mini lathe. Today we're going to be talking about the first cut and the first two tools you're going to use when you do your first cut. If you want this, so this video will be taking place after we've already set it up and mounted our workpiece on the mini lathe. If you want to see how this can be done, go to my first video, link in the description, and just focusing on setting up your mini lathe. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is safety and the two tools required for this video. First and most importantly, we're going to need the lathe with the workpiece mounted on it. Second, the two actual turning tools or chisels we're going to use are the 3 quarter inch spindle gouge and the 3 8 inch spindle gouge. Now you notice the difference between these two tools is the size of the flute. The flute is the metal portion that's not the beveled or cutting edge. All right. Now, the three-quarter inch spindle gouge is used for your rough cuts or semi-finishing. Your three-eighths inch is used for finishing or detailing work. The safety portion of this is pretty simple. You don't want to touch the workpiece while it's rotating. You want to have all long hair tied back or any loose, dangly, baggy clothing removed so it can't be caught in the workpiece. The actual danger coming from the workpiece is chipping it and having it fly into your face. Now on a mini lathe, while this is a very important safety issue, it's not as important as it would be on a big lathe. Because a big lathe, you have more horsepower, powering more wood, with more speed flying towards your face. So for that reason, for a mini lathe, I feel that it's only necessary to have your basic safety goggles. However, for a full size lathe, you definitely want to have a face shield, especially for your first cut. Okay, let's power our lathe on now, or set it up to be powered on. So the first thing we check is make sure the tool rest is completely out of the way because we're not cutting yet. So it, and your workpiece spins freely. If you have a variable speed lathe, you want to make sure that your variable speed is turned all the way down to its lowest setting. You want to make sure your speed is on the lowest setting whenever you first turn on the machine. This way, if the workpiece flies apart under the stresses of being spun around, it's not going to be flying towards your face as fast as it possibly can. So, power's on, speed is down, tool rest is out of the way. Your tailstock is locked and the spindle for the tailstock is locked. All we're gonna do now is just flip the power switch and you can see it rotating, all right? Vibration should not be much and there should just be a little slight humming sound. Okay, turn it off, comes to a complete stop. Now, what we're going to do is position our tool rest, as I showed in our first video. Make sure the height is correct. Make sure it doesn't hit. Like that. You want to make sure that you are about an eighth or a quarter of an inch away from your workpiece, but no farther, especially for spindle turning. Once you get to bull turning or faceplate turning, it will get a little different, but for now, a quarter to an eighth of an inch is, is as far as you want. So, make sure this doesn't hit as we spin it by hand. We turn it on, and it spins. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna make our first cut. We have our three quarter inch uh, roughing gouge, we put one finger underneath our roughing gouge as we put that finger right into the tool rest. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our roughing gouge up and let it hit while also touching the tool rest. We're going to let it hit against our workpiece. So you get... Alright, that's the sound you want to hear. reposition the camera so you can get a better view of this. So we're going to do the same thing. We turn our lathe on, making sure our tool rested out of the way. 
we put our finger and our thumb to hold the tool as we put it on. Now you notice when I bring this down to hit, the cutting edge or the bevel of the tool is not hitting. All that's hitting is the flute or the back side of the flute. All right. So the action we're going to take for our first cut, what we're going to do is as this as our lathe is spinning, we're just going to drop our tool down so it starts to hit the wood. All right. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you hold the tool at an angle so it's not flat and it's not going down. All right. Angle upwards. You want to make sure that the back side of the flute is always firmly against the tool rest. So, lay it on, tool touching against the tool rest. Now, all we're going to do is just slide down and start to chip. So, as you can see, I've chipped the corners. That doesn't make a very nice cut. Okay? Do this, practice this sometimes, just do that much. Then when you get the hang of it, you will be able to put your tool here and just go straight in. All right? Now, from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go side to side. So, tools here, go to the side and done, and pull out. In, go to the side, and pull out. Now we can start in the middle a little bit. Now, if you notice, this is dug fur, meaning that it likes to chip out or blow out. Okay, for veteran woodworkers, you know what I mean. From you guys. That means that the chip, that the wood doesn't like to cut cleanly, it likes to just blow out in chunks. Meaning we have to go slowly and carefully. As you get more practice, you will get a feel for the wood and you'll be able to do it much faster. Right now I'm just going slow so I can demonstrate. So, tool on, tool touching, we rock down, grab an angle, and we cut. I'm going to fast forward this as I make this into a cylinder. Okay, so as you can see here, it looks sort of like a cylinder, doesn't it? Let's see. Not even close. All right. The reason this is is because when the lathe is spinning, you get the shadowing effect. So when it spins, you get you see the edges. So it looks like it's done. Eventually, as you get more practice, you'll begin to realize when it's shadowing and when it's actually a cylinder. You can also tell by the vibration in the tool and the noise that it makes, if it's a cylinder or if it's just a shadowing effect. You'll also notice, when I was doing this, I'm coming from side to side. All right, I can go the other way if you want, or I can even hold it with the other hand. Okay. I like to go from right side to left side, holding it in my left hand, because I'm right-handed. Okay, so let's work from here. I'm going to make it into a cylinder and then I'm going to show you another technique where you can get a super fine cut using just your three quarter spindle gouge.
Now, I don't know if the camera picked this up, but could you tell the change between, or the, the change in sound between the two cuts? This should be pretty close to a cylinder right now. See? There's less edges hitting. Once, once you get it pretty much a cylinder, there's a huge difference in the noise that it makes. Also, another thing I should mention is the distance of the tool rest between the workpiece. You know that because you're chipping down the workpiece and you're chiseling it out, the distance is going to get smaller because you're, or sorry, the distance is going to get larger because your workpiece is getting smaller. So every now and then you're, you're going to want to adjust your tool rest to make sure that you still maintain that one eighth to one quarter inch gap. Let me show you what this looks like. Epic teleporting, I know. Just so awesome. Gotta love video editing. So, readjust the tool rest. Distance is close now. Let's finish this up into a cylinder. Also, if you notice, I put a little spin or a little um, turn on my tool when I'm cutting. Personal habit. I'm, when you get later, and especially when you get into the 3 8 spindle gouge, you're definitely going to need to turn your tool. And I will cover a technique that involves turning your tool in this video, but for basic roughing, you can just hold it flat and chip. So. Almost there. By the way, this technique that I'm demonstrating right here is called scraping. All that this technique is doing is putting the tool into the wood and chipping off pieces of the wood. Okay? Just for reference. Because there's another technique called rubbing the bevel that allows you to make nice clean, which is what I'm going to go over once we make this into a cylinder. Good, so there we have it, there's the cylinder. It's pretty flat. If, so this is actually a great exercise to do if you wanna practice your turning skills, is just grab a scrap piece of wood and try to make a perfectly flat cylinder. So, way to check this is to use a tri-square or to grab a set of calipers, which are essential to turning and check the, check the uh, diameter of the cylinder. Outside calipers, great tool. All you do is just loosen them up. And 
until they slip through and then you can see the difference. Now I did a pretty good job here making this cylinder. That comes with practice though. Okay, so now what we're going to cover is called rubbing the bevel. Okay, this allows you to make very clean and very nice cuts without all, all this rough, it, it pretty much cuts down on your amount of sanding you're going to have to do. So, take my three quarters. The way I'm going to be cutting this is I'm going to take the tool and I'm going to turn it on its side. Okay, and what, sh what this is doing is it's acting as if it's slicing into the wood. So, if I have my piece, it's going to slice and act like a knife and just slice instead of chip, pretty much. That's why it makes a cleaner cut. I'm honestly not very good at rubbing the bevel, so I definitely look at other videos and tutorials on how to rub the bevel, because there are many other people that are far better at rubbing the bevel than I am. So, power on. I turn the tool, I make it sideways. Now what I'm going to do is instead of rubbing the flute like this, I'm going to rub the flute like this. And I'm hitting just the bottom most of the bevel. That edge right there, that's what I'm hitting against. What I'm going to do now is turn the tool so it begins to cut and just carry it. Okay? So, hit, turn, cut, and push. Okay? It produces a far cleaner cut. You can even sort of see it on the camera. This part's chipped. Let's see, I zoom it in. There, sort of. This part is rougher than this section is. Okay, that's the advantage of rubbing the bevel. All right, let's cover the other beginning tool in our arsenal, the 3 8 spindle gouge. Narrow flute and steep bevel, okay? This tool relies almost primarily on rubbing the bevel. So, we use the same technique as we did with the three quarter inch. So we turn it on, we hit the bevel, as we push in and begin to cut. Now it's far easier to rub the bevel with this tool. I don't know why. I'm sure there's some physics or something involved in it. I just know that it is easier. Or I find it easier. So, hit, turn, and cut. Now as you can see, it produces a different pattern of chipping. When I'm rubbing the bevel, you get this almost halo sort of deal of the chips that are being pushed versus if I'm scraping, chips are flying everywhere. Okay, last thing I'm going to cover in this video is how to take off your workpiece. It's really simple. All you do is release the locking lever that locks your tailstock as you hold your workpiece and pull the tailstock out. From there, simply remove your workpiece and you're done. Okay? If you want, if you're going to do uh, face plates or chuck turning, you also want to take out your spindle. So you take your knockout rod, you put it into your headstock, slide, tap, and take this out. Now be warned with taking out your spindle. And I've actually seen this happen, it's not very pretty. Some people like to have that there as they put as they put their hand in here and then they jam this really hard so their hand flies into their tailstock. Please don't be one of those people. Move your tailstock far enough out of the way where you can safely hit and remove without jamming your hand into a very sharp pointy point. Okay, that's it for this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and favorite. And as always, post anything or any questions in the comments, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I should be coming out with the other videos shortly, but I'm in school and it consumes so much of my time, as many of you who are in school know. So, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.